Let's bow in prayer. Father God, tonight we thank you for who you are, for the ways that you work and the things that you do. We know that you have something great in store for us, even tonight. We ask that you would open our ears, open our minds to be attentive, to hear a word from you. We love you. In your name we pray this all. Amen. done great things. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Y'all can sit down. Thank you for, um, thanks for staying up here with me. I have asked the praise team to stay up here with me. Um, thank you to Tyler for leading our group. Um, some of you, most of you know, probably Tyler went to Olivet, uh, just graduated from Olivet in the middle of this 
COVID. And uh, he doesn't know what he's doing, so he's on our couch again. No, we gave him a bedroom this time. We gave him a bedroom this time. But uh, he doesn't know what God has for him. He's a history major. And, um, you know, a history major means you can do anything you want or nothing at all. So he's not sure if he has grad school ahead of him. He's not sure if maybe ministry might be part of his future. He has, um, he's received uh, some interest from a church in coming to lead worship. And um, he'd be good. He'd be good. Um, he, he's, he's, you know, he's my boy. What else would he be? He'd be fantastic. No, I'm just teasing. But as long as he's going to be here at Forest Home, I intend to use him. So uh, he'll be leading on Sunday. He'll be leading here on Sunday. And let's have a word of prayer before we get started. And we do want to pray for um, the, the Rose Stallings family. Most of you know Rose passed away um, sometime in the night. And so um, we are praying for um, for Rose's family. You, you know who all that is. Of course, from our church, we have uh, um, Ronnie, Ronnie and Deb and, uh, and their children. And, uh, but you all know the whole family. And uh, so pray for, pray for them as they say goodbye to her. And also, let's, uh, we're grateful. We're grateful that uh, Jordan Free's little boy made it safely last week, in the past week. I don't remember when he was born. Does anybody know? Thursday like I said. So almost a week ago, but welcome to him. And um, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for uh, keeping us through it. Thank you for the promise that it holds. I ask, Lord, you'd be in this devotional. I ask, Lord, that you would, there would be something in this that would make someone more inspired to serve you than they ever were before. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I was thinking what to share tonight. Um, and Anytime anything heavy comes up or anything that I don't want to do, I tend to say, you know, I just play my little piano. I sing my little songs, like the Ray Stevens haircut song. I don't know if you all remember the Ray Stevens haircut song, but he would always be getting in these jams in the song, and he'd say, I, just, I play my piano, sing my little songs. And that's what I say because I don't play the piano, but I do sing my songs, and I do, I do worship. That's what I want to do. So this is not my wheelhouse to do a devotional, but if I'm called, I'm, um, I'm ready to do it. And so as I was thinking, what should I speak about, I got to thinking um, Monday I was inspired. If you're my friend on Facebook, you, maybe you saw it. Um, I bragged about this crew. This crew that's here, you, that you see most of them here. There's a couple tech people here that you're not seeing. But uh, we have a wonderful team. We have a wonderful team, I, uh, and, and I love to work with them. It's, it's the greatest part of my job is working with volunteers. Um, incidentally, the worst part of my job is also working with volunteers, but that's totally, totally different. But I love working with our worship team. And in the four months since COVID came along, we have thrown so much at these people. Uh, while most of you have stayed home on your couch like you were supposed to do, um, most of our team just kept coming. And we've been coming every Wednesday, bringing you this stream. We've been coming on Sundays. Um, we're, we're recording our services, um, which means they're here for a couple hours on Wednesday and, of course, Sunday. And now just for fun this past week, we've added a second service. So our team is carrying a load, carrying a load, and I'm so proud of them. They have, they have risen to every challenge. They have, they have handled it like professionals, and I love working with them. And I thought on our team, we are individuals. We come together. Um, Kurt runs a T-shirt shop. Carol's a teacher. Mona's a teacher. You're kind of a stay-at-home mom, kind of a, do a bunch of different things. I just told, told you Tyler just graduated. Brett works at a t-shirt shop. Uh, Austin's a teacher. We got lots of teachers here. Uh, Jason, he does two things. He has two jobs. He has, he, he, he's an administrator at Families, Inc., as well as um, he, he, he critter man. If you have, uh, if you have pesky, pesky critters, uh, rats, bats, snakes, Moles, you do you do those kind of things. Raccoons, ex a lot of ex exclusions. Keep them out of your house. And then Liz, she does the bakery plus homeschools her kids, and yeah. So that's what we that's what we do. Austin's not here tonight, but he he mows grass for a living. Alex, sorry, Austin's here. Alex mows grass. Anyway, so we all come together and we and we do and we do stuff um, where where we kind of set aside our set aside our individuality individuality in order that the team is better. 
And I think we have a real sense of unity on our team. I think that's, that's what makes it beautiful. I think that's what God wants from us. But I wasn't sure. So I went to the Bible and I said, what did God say about unity? And it had so much to say. I picked out a few verses, and I've asked the praise team, the worship team, everyone here's on the platform, they have a scripture verse. So, Liz, you start us off and just go down the line and, and, and read your verses. John 15, 12, love one another as I have loved you. 1 Peter 3, 8, finally all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Philippians 2, 2. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind. Colossians three fourteen, And above all these, put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Psalm 133, 1. Behold, how good and, un and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 through 5. For as, one, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though we are many, are one body in Christ, and, event, and individually members of one another. John seventeen twenty one says that they may all be one, just like you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. That's good. That's good. We could have read all day. Alex had a scripture. He wasn't able to be here tonight. Romans 12, 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. It's supposed to be a competition. We're supposed to do better than the other person. I like that. I wanted the worship team to read the scripture tonight because the parallel of what we do and the work and the work of the church is, is so similar. This is just kind of a microcosm of how the entire church is supposed to work, I believe. When we talk about unity, we're not just talking about everyone dressing alike, thank God. We're not talking about talking the same way, thank God. But we're talking about being in harmony and unity. Now, the band here, if you'll hear, see us wearing headphones, you see the band wearing headphones, you see some of the singers sometimes wearing headphones. We're hearing something in that. It's called a click. It's kind of like a metronome, and it goes, two. And when we come to that, we go, one, two, three, four. And many times, if, it, if, the, if it's the song where you come in on one, I expect Carol and Brett and Kurt and Brett and Austin, I expect them all to be in the same key. Now, it doesn't always work that way. I wanted to play a thing for you right here that uh, something that happened a couple weeks ago. We were recording our services, and I had, um, we kicked off into our, ser into our song, and at the end of the song, Brett said, Aaron, I wasn't in the right key. Now, that was my fault. It was my fault, but I hadn't told him what key we were going to be in, and here's what it sounded like. I wanted you to hear this real quick. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? Hey, hey, he's a great guitar player. He's a great guitar player. And that, that little lick that he do, 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 it was, it was a nice guitar lick. It showed his skill, but it was not in unity with everyone else because he was in the wrong key, okay? We expect people to be in the right key. We expect the drummer to be in the rhythm, the singers to be in the right key. Um, we have seen so many times when churches are not in unity. And right now we see where our entire community is out of unity. We're fighting over things like masks. We're fighting over things like, are we going too fast? Are we going too slow? What are we doing? 
We don't trust our government officials. And it's really, I think God is sad that we're so far out of unity. And so I am calling for us as a church to come together on the things that matter. Now, if you want to wear a mask or you don't wear a ma- want to wear a mask, we're trying to make a way for you to be happy here, okay? We're doing two services now. But don't let it be divisive. There are three ways that I, that I can think of. I'm sure there's many, many more ways to be, to be united. But there are three that I'd like to just mention tonight. One is we need to focus more on what we agree rather than what we disagree on. As Christians, we all have the same Holy Spirit living within us. We bow our knees to the same Savior. We're all children of the same Father. If we can find a way to be united in these truths, we will be unstoppable at sharing God's love with the world. I believe the devil is so happy right now that we're all arguing over masks. I think he couldn't be happier. Number two, we stop slandering those within the body of Christ who hold different viewpoints. This one's hard for some. Maybe I'm just talking to myself right now. Social media allows us to throw our opinions out there. They don't have to be well, well, well founded. They don't have to be educated. They, we just throw our opinions out there. But how many battles are fought within the church over non-fundamental theological preferences? Does your salvation really depend on your view of how worship should be conducted? If we sing hymns or contemporary praise songs, does your salvation depend on that? Mine doesn't. Does it depend on your view of women in ministry? Mine doesn't. Let's go a step further. Is your view of salvation depending on whether or not you wear a mask? Mine's not. It's okay to stand and it's okay to be to feel differently, but don't put down others because they don't agree with you. And finally, number three to me is pray for those you disagree with. A while back, probably a month, six weeks ago, I was talking to Pastor Ken. It was right when the whole racial tension things were happening. And he told me, he said, it's impossible to be angry with someone you're actively praying for. That's good. That's good. If you find someone on social media, someone you sit in the pew with on Sundays, and you're just, you just think those people are crazy, pray for them. Pray for them. Let, 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 let's not get all bent, bent out of shape and all, all concerned about things that are not central to our theology. Can I get an amen? I hope we don't, um, we don't get divided over nonsense. My, mo- my mother used to say something. She used to say, does this matter in the light of eternity? And so often the answer is no. No, it doesn't. It might matter in the light of eternity. I might tear down a relationship. But in the end of the day, I don't always have to be right. And I am speaking to me right now. There are many applications to be made about this. Sometime in the very near future, we're going to be voting on a new lead pastor. Let's be united. This week, we're starting nursery back. Sometime soon, we're going to be talking about when we're going to start Sunday school back and children's ministry. Let's be united. And again, it doesn't, you don't have to be united on the timetable necessarily. But let's be united in believing that God has called us to do what we're planning on doing. And when the smart people say, hey, let's do this, let's get behind them. Overall, in the mission of our church, what is our motto? Forever making a difference for our Lord in our personal area of influence. Let's be united. COVID, no COVID, mask, no mask. We've been called to be God's hands and feet to reach our community for Christ. And as long as we're fighting over silly stuff, it's going to be hard to get that done. Let's be united. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you. We thank you for our team. We thank you for our team for for the unity that we feel. We thank you for our church and overall the unity that we feel. And, Father, I just ask that you would help us to be unified. Help us to all pull together in the same direction. Let's not get sideways with our our friends, 
with our fellow believers because we disagree on a couple little things. You are Lord of all. That much we agree with. And tonight, Lord, we're committing to say, lead us. We want to go with you. Help us to major on the majors. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All we need is found in Jesus Christ. I hope you found that to be true. I hope you have. Hey, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, Pastor Pete already told you we are opening nursery this week. If you um, if you have have children, I don't even know what age that is. Four and under. So if you have four children, four and under, bring them. We we really really need to know if you're bringing children. We need to make sure we're properly staffed. So please call. Please call. Um, 
You know that number, 870-932-9069. Call it now. Call it now. We had someone say, I want to come on Sunday if I can remember to call on Thursday. No, no, no. Thursday's the deadline. Call anytime, 24-7 from any time you want to all the way tomorrow, 5 o'clock is the... Is, 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 is the, that's, the, that's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, but even then, we have, we have available seats. Do not let, don't let, if you didn't make a reservation, you didn't know you're, you're going to be able to come, let us know. Let us know. And um, we, hope, we hope you'll plan on being here. Um, thank you for your giving. ForestHomeNAS.com is a wonderful way to do that. Y'all have been so so good in your giving. Uh, Dr. Reeder would want me to tell you that he is, uh, he made it home. We know he made it home. He, he left on Monday night this time, um, and he's home, and he's going to do some laundry, and he's going to be back on Saturday, because that, that's what he does. And uh, so he'll, he's going to be back on Saturday to speak to us on Sunday. And, uh, and he's on, he's, I, I know he's in the chat right now, um, and, and our technology just won't allow him to share with us uh, but hopefully that's changing. Hopefully that's changing very soon. We are working on a project. We've had people give some dollars, and we're very excited. Our whole uh, streaming is about to get a whole lot better, a whole lot better. So we're, we have smart people working on that, and we've had generous people giving to that, and we say thank you. Thank you. To the glory of God, we're excited about being able to do this better than what we're doing it right now. Uh, but until then, we're going to keep doing our very best. Thank you for being with us. Can't wait to see you on Sunday, 9 o'clock, 1030. You know, the, you know the drill. Come and be with us. If not, we'll be right here on Facebook and YouTube at, at 930, 930. So thank you very much. Have a great evening. Have a great uh, Get a cup of coffee. Go to Sunday school. That's not tonight, but you can go ahead and get a cup of coffee if it won't keep you up. Have a good night.